Vancouver is the place to be, one of the most desirable cities to live in North America. It is of little surprise then that it also happens to be one of the most expensive. Pretty much any online list or directory you may want to refer to, Vancouver's rents are consistently the highest in the country. $2,500 for a single bedroom is normal. It's an unfortunate reality which makes Vancouver rather unlivable. But there are some changes on the horizon which may improve the situation. While Vancouver is already fairly renowned in the transit world for its SkyTrain, trolley buses and sea buses, so far it has not utilized the potential of this infrastructure to the maximum extent. Let me show you how it's about to do so in a big way. This is the commercial Broadway station on the Millennium Line, a very unspectacular station. It is a major transit hub with the third highest number of boardings of any SkyTrain station and a terminus of the region's busiest bus route, the 99B Line. If you look around, there is quite a lot of low residency housing for single family homes. Considering the throughput of people and the desirability of this location, this is a missed opportunity and a location where many people would like to live, but they can't due to zoning laws. This is about to change. Soon enough, this station should look more like the station at Marine Drive. The area surrounding this station includes the Marine Gateway Retail Hub, a movie theater, a gym, a bank, and high-density residential housing. It's a self-contained, walkable, 15-minute city. It's the essence of transit-oriented development, which is the future for Vancouver. The practice of people and activities gathering around heavily trafficked corridors and nodes is thousands of years old. It can be seen in countless ancient settlements around the world. It's a fundamentally straightforward, pragmatic idea that didn't need any urban planning in the past. But the rise of the automobile in the 20th century saw a drastic shift towards sprawling, car-oriented development. Luckily, this trend has reached its logical conclusion, as it all began to change in the 1960s and 1970s, as rising oil prices and growing concerns about air pollution and traffic congestion led to renewed interest in transit-oriented design. During this time, a number of cities in Europe, Asia and North America began to implement Todd principles. What if there was a West Dakota? In their urban planning and development, often as part of larger efforts to revitalize declining inner city neighborhoods. Today, Todd continues to be a widely adopted concept in cities around the world. Well, I got a whole page of other ideas, each as impractical as they are prohibitively expensive and is seen as a key strategy for creating sustainable, livable communities. So closer to home, the provincial government in British Columbia recently announced new legislation to allow high-rise residential towers up to 20 stories near all SkyTrain stations and up to 12 stories near bus exchanges. The densification requirements will apply to residential or mixed-use residential land, while for places with agricultural and industrial land uses, as well as First Nations reserve lands, along with airports, will not be held accountable to this requirement. This will not only apply to Metro Vancouver, but also to other major urban regions and cities with major public transit services. Also, under the new legislation, minimum vehicle parking requirements will be abolished. By eliminating parking minimums, the government aims to reduce construction costs, speed up development, lower emissions, and further boost public transit usage. More interestingly, the Todd legislation introduces specific guidelines for building heights and densities within Todd areas. You know what else would be cool? A miniature cupcake gun, so you could shoot tiny cupcakes in into your mouth. The radius of Todd development will extend to an area of 800 meters, essentially about 5 to 10 minutes walking distance. For sites within 200 meters of a SkyTrain station, a minimum of a 20-story tower will be allowed. Between 200 and 400 meters, the minimum height will be 12 stories, and 400 to 800 meters away, there will be a minimum of 8 stories. So most areas in the direct vicinities of SkyTrain stations should in time become densely populated city-like districts. The provincial government estimates that over the next 10 years, the Todd legislation could catalyze the construction of up to 100,000 additional homes within 100 Todd areas across British Columbia. 
But then I thought, why isn't there a Disneyland? Personally, my first encounters with massive Todd developments were in Asia. In Tokyo, for example, where space is incredibly limited, this kind of development is absolute norm. And I pretty much lived inside a Todd. In Manila, in the Philippines. It was great. I was within five minutes of a metro station and had access to a variety of goods and services within the same area. If I wanted to buy clothes, for example, all I had to do was walk five minutes to the metro, ride five more minutes to the next station, which was essentially integrated into a massive mall. My life was essentially contained within a couple of islands that were connected with highly efficient public transportation. Significantly easier than having to have to drive somewhere, park, pay for the parking, sit in Manila traffic and road rage, and then have to pay for gas and whatever else comes with motor vehicle ownership. Essentially, by integrating residential, commercial and recreational spaces into the public transportation network, you minimize urban sprawl and promote the use of public transportation. When people live, work and shop in close proximity to transit hubs, they are more likely to rely on trains and buses for their daily commute and activities, as it becomes more efficient and affordable to do so. Furthermore, creating mixed-use neighborhoods ensures that residents have easy access to essential services, entertainment and amenities, promoting a sense of community and minimizing the need for long commutes. High-density areas such as metro stations often become hubs of economic activity, attracting shops, restaurants and cultural facilities, greatly contributing to the economic vitality of the neighborhood. These Todds What if you could take your kids to a dentist's office where all the dentists were clowns? will essentially become their own 15-minute cities, which a resident doesn't have to leave in order to meet their basic needs. Denser neighborhoods also naturally mean more challenging driving conditions, encouraging walking, cycling and the use of public transit. There are a few downsides, however, or ways in which things can go wrong when implementing carelessly. A Todd can lead to gentrification by increasing property values and attracting higher income residents to traditionally lower income neighborhoods. This can and has contributed to decreased affordability and can lead to the displacement of long-time residents, particularly in areas with rising property values and limited affordable housing options. A Todd can also lead to the loss of local character and cultural diversity as neighborhoods are transformed by new construction as well as the arrival of new residents and businesses. Todd projects can increase demand for public services such as schools, parks and healthcare, which can be difficult for communities to accommodate. As a result, more affluent communities often reap the majority of the benefits from Todd's, while low-income communities may experience the negatives more acutely. So it is critical to understand that the social impacts of a Todd vary greatly depending on the specific context and circumstances of each project. Ensuring that this benefits all members of a community often requires involving all stakeholders. In other words, there should be strategies to mitigate the destructive impacts of gentrification and the displacement of long-time residents. Overall, however, Todd's are going to bring lots of new high-density housing to Vancouver, and they are going to do so while improving the lives of public transit users. It's a win-win, which should make Vancouver that much more livable. Next, you might be interested in finding out what is in store for Canada's largest infrastructure mega project. And this is my Patreon map. Everyone on this map is a legend. Thank you guys so much for your support. Geoperspective, out.